Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for people and animals. And this is Tristan Corgi, and he's a Corgi. And today is another episode of Conversations with a Corgi, and we are continuing our talk about Tellington T-Touches, and today we will be looking at one of my favorite T-Touches, the jellyfish. But before we get to that, I want to remind everyone that we have this wonderful opportunity to work with Linda Tellington herself for a week at a companion animal training in Rockville, Maryland. And this is May 12th through 17th, and it is at a dog training center there that is beautiful and pleasant. And my friend Pam Wanbeer organizes the class. Everything runs smoothly. It is a life-changing event to spend a week with Linda. She is 80 now, and it is a rare opportunity for her to be on the East Coast and for you to join her with your pet and your friends. And there are many places to stay, and there are all different um, affordability ranges. There's lots of different food to eat in the area. It is a wonderful time, and again, that's May 12th through 17th. And you can call the Tellington Tea Touch office, or you can go online to the Tellington Tea Touch website and find out more information about the course. Again, it is a really a once in a lifetime opportunity, although she does come to that area um, a few times over the years, it is really a great thing to be able to work with Linda for a week and learn more about tea touches, no matter you have a dog, cat, horse, rabbit, um, or even a person that has issues, you will learn so much from this companion animal training that you can apply to every living being in your life. So please walk or run to your Tellington Tea Touch website and give a call to the office. They're in Santa Fe. They're not open on the weekends, uh, but you can leave a message and let them know that you are interested in the class. Even if you can't sign up right now, um, call and let them know if you're interested and then you know you can work out the details as it gets closer but I can't encourage you enough to take advantage of this opportunity if you have been enjoying these videos and if you work in uh, an animal bodywork field or if you have a senior pet um, you can take the class and learn so much that you can use to help your dog your cat your horse or yourself and it is a wonderful opportunity so that said, we will today talk about the jellyfish jiggle. And it has a funny name, and I don't know if you've seen jellyfishes floating in the ocean. They are so beautiful, and they're clear, and they just move so fluidly and beautifully when they're floating. I remember being in Hawaii at the aquarium on Maui and seeing jellyfish in so many different beautiful colors in this huge, um, like round spiral tank that went up through the middle of a room that was completely black on the walls. And they were just luminous floating in there, so beautiful. And it reminded me of the jellyfish jiggle, of course, but the way they were floating in there, just they, they kind of go like this to travel like a squid does. And it just, they are spectacular beings as long as you don't walk on them. And it does make me sad on the beach in the summer when I'm out on Cape Cod and I see jellyfish washed up on the beach that didn't make it back out with the tide. I feel so sad for them because they are such beautiful beings. And even though they're supposed to be so simple in their nervous system, they still have an incredible presence to them. When you see them floating in these tanks, they had them in in Hawaii. I mean, I just was in awe of how really angelic they seem and just luminous and gentle in their movements. So. The jellyfish jiggle is a tea touch we use to loosen and soften muscles. And I personally, in my holistic physical therapy practice, use it uh, to work with a dog's balance. And I'll show you how to do that today as well. And you want to do this on the soft, squishy parts of your animal. You're not going to jellyfish jiggle around their face or on their legs. It's especially good if you have a big muscular dog, like a Roddy, or my niece's dog, who's a Ridgeback pit bull mix, you know, a big muscular dog. And it's a really wonderful tea touch to do to loosen muscles after exercise or before exercise. And I was thinking today, many of us have been trapped indoors for the winter. Maybe we aren't walking our dogs as frequently or they're not getting off the leash to run. And what kinds of things can we do to help prepare them 
for the increased activity of the spring and summer, um, as well as ourselves. And the jellyfish jiggle is one of the things that you can do before you take your dog for that first long walk or after you come back from that first long walk to help relieve some of the tension in the muscles and help with that lactic acid buildup. It's also a great technique to use to warm your horse up before you ride him or after you come back from a long ride. And horses in particular have many of them been standing around over the winter, you know, going for little walk rides in the snow or the mud. And now we're just starting to enter the competition season and we are starting to work them and ourselves more than we were before. So really the jellyfish jiggle is a perfect thing to do on your horse's croup muscles and on his shoulder muscles before you take him out for that ride or even you know next week if you've been taking him for long rides and you're going to return to your jumping routine jellyfish jiggles before and after that riding session are super beneficial and I might add they're really a great thing to do on yourself on your thighs and your buns before you get on the horse just to loosen you up and if you can do them on your legs once you're on the horse also really beneficial to have you sitting evenly in the saddle. A lot of us have gotten stiff in the winter and of course we're driving all the time so we have that right leg sitting in a shortened position. And the jellyfish jiggle is a good thing to do especially on your right leg after you get on your horse to allow that leg to lengthen down when it's not in the stirrup so that you are indeed sitting evenly on the horse. So many of our riding problems are from our own asymmetries in our body that go into our saddle and then into our horses. So it's really important that you be relaxed and symmetrical in your own body before you get on your horse. And as much as it's not so obvious, I believe this is important with our dogs too. If we're walking asymmetrically on a leash with our dog at the other end of the leash, our limp gets translated down that leash to the dog. Or we're pulling on him in a way that is causing him to have a similar asymmetry. So really important, I think, before you take a walk to do a few jellyfish jiggles on yourself and your horse or your dog, or even your kitty. I have a new kitty client who's bigger than my dog, and the jellyfish jiggles on his rump felt really good. So how do we do the jellyfish jiggle? On a horse, you're gonna have your hands together like this, and we usually jiggle up like this, just to get a little motion, to make it jiggle like a bowl of jello. I also sometimes just vibrate my hands like this to get the motion started before I do this. So with a dog, you might not have your two hands together. You might just have one hand. And again, we're trying to go up and down, but you can also go back and forth just a little bit. There's gonna be more movement up and down. So to demonstrate that, we have the floppy corgi because all the other ones are too stiff to do a jiggle on. So I'm just going to put my hand on his rump and it, usually you put your hand vertically and you jiggle up and down and see how the movement is going all the way up to his ears and um, I don't know if you can see his other front leg. See how his other front leg is jiggling up and down too? And if I jiggle sideways without going up so much you can see a difference between that and this. It's just a different motion going up through his whole body. Now he has no restrictions because he's stuffed. So you might not see the same uh, motion going through the body of your animal if he has limitations, you know, a, a sore spot somewhere in the shoulder. The cat I had yesterday had a sore spot in his right shoulder, right up near the thoracic vertebrae. I guess he used to be a pretty active kitten and he does jump and run a lot. And, you know, just because a cat is um, kind of fluid and agile doesn't mean that they're not hurting themselves sometimes when they jump down from things. So he's not unusual. I see a lot of cats that have sore shoulders. So he was not jiggling all the way up his spine like this dog is. Actually this leg, because I'm holding it, is not jiggling. So it's actually pretty similar to what the cat was like. So you can do this on the rump or along the side of the tummy. If your dog's having any kind of a digestive problem, I don't recommend doing this on the tummy. Or like Tristan, he just ate a big meal. It's, it was his breakfast, so I'm not going to do this on his tummy. And then on the shoulders here, there's always a nice meaty place to do this on the shoulders. We primarily do not do it too close to the spine. First of all, it's not very jiggly there. There's a lot of muscles. Not much is going to happen there. But as you can see, if we're jiggling these loose muscles in the haunches, you can see we're getting a little jiggle in the spine. 
Tristan's a pretty floppy dog. He's not as floppy as this dog, so you might be able to see this on him. So, Trist, you want to stand up, hon? Come on. Good boy. Ugh, the dog hair is really flying. So, I need you to stand sideways so they can see you, honey. Give me the buns this way. <laughs> he's getting really stiff because he's insecure about how his balance. Let's see if I can get him there. All right, so I'll just start back here. And I don't know if you can see, but on his fur, I can see a jiggle going all the way up to this part. And now it's going up to his shoulder. <laughs> Let's see on the front end. I'll try to do it with him in this position. Okay, you can see that little movement going up into his ears even. See how his head's jiggling a little bit. He says, Mom, that is a funny way to pet me. What do you think? It feels really good if you can do it on yourself and you're not too tight. And of course we do this on tight muscles to loosen them. See the little jiggle in his head even when I'm doing the shoulder on the other side? See how it, the white on his neck is moving a little bit when I'm jiggling back towards his haunches? This, we're gonna need to turn you so that your buns are facing the camera. All right, so he's laying down, but I can show you now how I would do them on him, on his hind quarters here. And we're just going up and down with a little jiggle. <laughs> he's finding it more relaxing in a down position. And that's because when they are up, it is a bit of a balance challenge. And I'll show you more about that in a minute. This is also something that you can do with your um, dog's toy or with the sheep mitt. I'll just use this stuffed corgi to do it on Tristan. And he's loosening up now. I'm seeing the motion going all the way up into this part of him. I don't know if you can see that. Turn your head, Beth. He says, Mom, it's not relaxing <laughs> when he has to turn. But see how he's looking back. He's interested in what I'm doing. We'll give him a little bit of a break here. And then I'll show you how we use this for balance and proprioception, especially in a dog or a cat because they're little. And, you know, this movement is fairly large on a small animal, even a, a 60 pound dog. So I have used this with great success to challenge balance in a senior. And the way that I um, talked to you about doing balance challenges with a senior or um, a particular breed of dog or a dog like a corgi that's at risk for DM any kind of balance challenges you can do with them standing on a pillow or a piece of foam or even just on a somewhat slippery floor. I don't recommend that because it does make them really nervous. It's better to stick them on a pillow or a sofa cushion on the floor. And I showed you how we can use lick of the cow's tongue to give them a little bit of a balance challenge when they're standing on um, a soft surface like a pillow. And by that same token, we can use the jellyfish jiggle to give them a little bit of a balance challenge when they're standing on um, an unlevel surface. So Tristan is ideally <laughs> situated on an unlevel surface. He is on a pile of four pillows on his hind end. So the poor guy, he's got no stability back there. And then his front end is on the slippery kitchen table. So this is a good opportunity to give him some balance and proprioception exercises. And I will show you how to do that with Lick of the Cow's Tongue and with the Jellyfish Jiggle. And I don't, he's a, he's a strong dog. He's seven, he's young, 
He does a lot of running around. We walk um, for at least an hour every day, uh, except in the terrible snow. And then we play squeakies for a long time every day, which is fun for him, not as much fun for me. He's not very um, giving with the squeaky sometimes. All right, can you stand up this? Good boy. Okay, right there. So I'm going to show you some lick of the cow's tongue. I have to position him that way, oh, which is going to make it even harder. But because he's so active, you know, he can stand on these pillows and on this slippery table and be okay, because this is really going to engage his abdominal muscles. So I'm just starting with some lick of the cow's tongue. And I can feel his front left leg sliding a little. I'm supporting it with my other hand. And when you're doing the jellyfish jiggles, if you're doing it with only one hand, because your dog is little like him, uh, make sure you're supporting his body with your other hand because you don't really want to knock him down. And you like that connection. And now I'm doing the jellyfish jiggles back here on his hind end. And I can really, um, my arm is resting on the pillow and I can feel him shifting his weight between his hind legs to give himself balance while I'm doing this. You can see that rocking going through his body up here when I'm doing his shoulder. And he's blinking a little bit. He, he likes it. It's enjoyable. It feels really good. And when I'm on his hind end, it's actually a little more difficult because his feet and his 18 pounds of weight are really pushing down on the pillow to try to stabilize him. So I'll go back to some lick of the cow's tongue because that's an easier um, T-touch for him to stabilize himself during while he's on this balance challenge of his hind ends on the pillows and his front end on the table. Now, if you have a senior dog, you might actually start this way by putting their hind end on the pillows and their front end on something level and secure like a carpet and doing the T-touches and the jellyfish jiggles to help improve their balance and proprioception. I don't know if you can see when I'm doing it with my hand on the other side. See the little jiggles coming up over his hip? Look the other way, Biff. See the little jiggles coming over his hip? And see how he's shifting his hind end side to side? Because I'm giving him a little bit of a balance challenge here with the jellyfish jiggles. See his ears wiggling? He's a pretty mobile, loose dog. I mean, honestly, if I found a tight spot on him, it would get worked on immediately. So he's not going to be a dog that when you jiggle, there's going to be a restriction. But it is a really interesting thing to do with your dog and notice places where the jiggle doesn't happen because those could be areas of injury or tension that you'd want to go back to with the T-touches I taught you earlier, like the clouded leopard or maybe the leg circles if it's in their shoulder and some of the paw work to help your dog relieve the tension that's in those muscles. And I think the jellyfish jiggle, if you're doing it near the abdominal area, is also a great thing to do to improve a dog with um, digestive problems. Now, obviously, you don't want to do it after a big meal. And ideally, you're feeding your dog at least two times a day, morning and evening. So, you know, two in the afternoon might be a good time to do this on their gut. And this is a really, really wonderful thing to do for their balance. I don't know. Look over here, Biss. I mean, you can, can you see how his butt is shifting right, left, right, left when I do this? He's trying to keep his balance on these pillows. Okay, hon, you can sit down. He says, I don't want to. That was really fun. <laughs> oh, poor Tristan. I picked him up off the table. You can lay down. Okay. You like the jellyfish? You want more? Okay. Well, I'll just do a few more. Oh, you have a much better view of him now. See how I'm doing this on his shoulder? And I'll do some on this side on his rump. And maybe you'll be able to see how the top line is moving as he's adjusting his balance. The little balance challenge I'm giving him. Plus, it's loosening his muscles. So he's learning how to, in a relaxed way, adjust his body to a balance challenge. Some people, my mother's one of them, when she has a balance challenge, she's so nervous that she tightens up 
and gets really stiff. Now this was not her habit her whole life. She was a very excellent dancer and roller skater and ice skater. So to do those sports and um, be good at them, you have to be relaxed while you're having a balance challenge. And that's why these jellyfish jiggles are really good because they're relaxing the muscles but still asking Tristan to engage his core muscles and the muscles in his rump. And this rump is pretty hot compared to the other one. So he was asking me very nicely to continue working on him because he had some issues going on on this side. And he's a little guy and we have had icy steps here for weeks. He could have had a little bit of an injury coming up and down the stairs. We took a pretty long walk yesterday after a few days in from the rain that we've been having. So he might have needed a little more work on this side of his buns. Right, Tris? So with the jellyfish jiggle, it's really important to keep two hands on your pet, even your horse when you're doing this, and to work in an area where there's already some um, some mobility in the tissue, like the rump or the lower part of the shoulder. We don't work too close to the spine, and you're just putting a little bit of motion in. And this is so important because anything in your body that's not working well usually has decreased motion. And lack of motion is lack of health in your cells, in your muscles, in your entire body. If you have a shoulder that will only go through part of the range of motion, that is going to lead to problems in the mechanics of the shoulder and you're going to end up with you know, dysfunction. So mobility is critical to the health of your body, the health of your cells, the health of your organs. And the jellyfish jiggle is a great way to add mobility in an area of the body where there might be tension and a lack of mobility. And that goes for yourself as well. You can do it on your arm like this. It feels really good if you work in an office and it's been a long day at the typewriter or at the computer, just doing a few of these can really bring you some relaxation. At the end of the day, Tristan wants more jellyfishes. <laughs> and as I said, if you're a rider, doing them on your legs, you can't see this, but I'm doing them on my thighs now, and on your rump before you get on the horse can be really helpful to having a better ride. So I hope you enjoy your work with the jellyfish jiggle. Give it a try, no matter you have a cat, a dog, or a bunny, or a horse. Guinea pigs love this work. Um, I usually put my hands around the guinea pig like this and just do a little jiggle with the back of one hand on his rump, and you'll see the whole pig kind of wiggle. Um, it's so fun to do it with little tiny animals like that. So, hi Joan. You're one of the only people who has written in, and I can see what you're writing. So. Um, I encourage you to enjoy the jellyfish jiggle. It's a great thing to do for a senior pet to challenge his balance or even a young puppy that's got legs everywhere and flopping around. It will help engage their abdominal muscles. If you've got a long dog, like a dachshund, a corgi, or a basset hound, it's a really great thing to do this when they are a puppy with a balance challenge so that they get into a habit pattern of walking with their back up instead of curved down. You don't want your dog to look like the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile with their back down. You want their back up so that they are using their stomach muscles and not just hanging on their structure. It will give your dog a much longer functional life if they walk with their back held up by their stomach muscles. And it's a great thing to do for yourself uh, before and after you get on or off of your horse. And frankly for me, I teach yoga in a really cold room. Uh, most of the winter, we were always making jokes that we have the opposite of hot yoga. We have cold yoga, which means you really have to move everything slowly and carefully. But the jellyfish jiggle would be a great thing to do before you go to start that yoga class or during the middle of it. And maybe now that I think of it, I should add it to my classes <laughs> because it does loosen your muscles and prevent spasm and tension in your tissues. It's a great thing to do to promote health throughout your body or your animals because Anything that's not moving is in a state of dysfunction, leading to a state of disease. So it's really important to keep mobility throughout your body and your pet's body. So I hope you have some fun practicing the jellyfish jiggle today before you take your dog for a walk, or sit with your kitty, or take your horse for a ride, or sit with your rabbit for a little while. Especially for bunnies, this is good on their hind end. Sometimes I used to take my bunnies outside when it got nice out. It's a little too cold here still. 
but they just go crazy around the yard, jumping and leaping and kicking out when they've got the traction of the ground and the excitement of being outside. And they do something called binkies, where they jump in the air and kick their legs out. It's like a capriole for bunnies. So the jellyfish jiggle before I would take my buns out would be a great thing if they're going to have some exercise running around the living room today. Try some jellyfish jiggles with your bunny or your guinea pig. So this is Sally Morgan. This has been an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And we will not be on air Monday and Tuesday because I have to go to this um, education job that I have very early in the morning. And I don't get back till quite late, so I can't do it on Monday and Tuesday. And we will be here tomorrow. I have um, a special talk planned, which I think some of you will find fun and interesting. And that will be at 9.25 tomorrow morning. And we'll be back on Wednesday with a further exploration of Tellington Tea Touch and the wonderful work of Linda Tellington. And then we will be moving on from there to look at vibrational healing, craniosacral therapy, Reiki, and some of the other modalities that I do, and looking at some case studies from some of the many animals and people I've worked with over the years. So thanks for joining us today. Do check out my website, sallymorganpt.com. It's back up. It's still in a, uh, a, a baby state. <laughs> it has not got the full shop in yet and we're still working on some of the designs and Brian and I spent a long time working on the blogs posts and getting them back up and that still needs about three hours more work um, and also please look on this page Sally Morgan PTCST and see the wonderful tribute that Simple Wag did for Comet and his work with a veteran named Dick and also check out my hour-long interview with um, the wonderful Dr. Bernie Siegel and we talked a lot about animals and the miracles and amazing lessons of the animals in our lives. And you just click on that and sit down for an hour with your cup of tea or coffee and your cat or dog on your lap and have a great time hearing about the animals that have um, changed Bernie's life and mine. So have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow morning at 925. Thanks so much.